Okay, today we're going to look at protection factors. Basically, a protection factor is how much protection you, against, you get against radiation from radioactive fallout. Uh, the higher the number, the more protection you get. And how it works is you take the raw uh, level of radiation outside in the open, if you're just standing in the field somewhere, you know, uh, and then you divide that by the protection factor, and that's how much radiation you're going to get inside your shelter, whatever that looks like. So that can rate anywhere from, you know, somewhere in you know, a wood frame building, an average of about two and a half uh, on the top floor if you had you no know, basement, uh, your only floor, or up to 10 in the basement uh, in the wood frame building. And, you know, the more uh, deeper your basement, the better your construction because, you know, the denser the material, the more protection factor you get from a given thickness. So, for example, you know, Four inches of concrete gives you a lot more protection than four inches of wood, as for instance. And of course, sand's fairly dense too. That's why people use sandbags to build uh, these you know, lean-to fallout shelters. So, in a very large office building, uh, if you're in or apartment building, if you're in a basement or a sub basement, you can get anywhere from 100 to 200, or even more if it's got multiple sub basements or a very deep parkade that's got four or five levels. You know. As long as the parkade has at least a, a kind of a, a minimum of a 90 degree, preferably 180 degree uh, turns to get into it. Um, so the fallout can't just be blowing in with the wind. Uh, you're in pretty good shape. And of course, the farther down you are, the better it is. Uh, in the center of a large office building, middle floor, center of the building, assuming it's not one of these uh, floor to ceiling glass office buildings, in which case, and you're close enough where the glass would be blown in, in which case, um, you're not going to get much protection at all because there's going to be no glass to stop the fallout from blowing inside the uh, interior of the building. But assuming you have enough walls there to, uh, and, uh, and your windows are intact, and there are, you know, divisions within that, like in the middle center corridor, rather than just everything being open all the way to the elevator core, like some office buildings are. Uh, you should be able to get a pretty decent protection in the center of a building, say, you know, up to 100. And then again, the basements are best, and the deeper in the basement, the better, and the center of the basement, the better too. Again, because you're looking at distance and thickness of material. The farther away you are from the source of radiation, the more protection you get just from the air. Um, and the more layers of material and denser the material, the more protection you get. And this is important because, uh, especially if you're actually worried about ground bursts or heavy fallout, uh, if you're in a place like Mino, uh, North Dakota, um, and you are just in the basement of your wood frame house, uh, you're not going to survive because you got 150 ground bursts at least for all the missile silos around you, uh, at least that. Uh, the radiation dosage is probably going to be about 30 sieverts or, you know, 3,000 um, rems. Um, uh, you're going to be getting uh, probably 300 in the first hour, maybe about 250 in the next hour. So after about two hours, you already got a, uh, essentially a 50-50 chance of dying of radiation sickness from the dosage you just got. You add the accumulation over the next few days, uh, it'll probably push your chances out to maybe two-thirds, maybe. Uh, and certainly if you just have a, a wood frame bungalow or a trailer and you only got protection factor of two, you're, you're not going to make it at all. So... Uh, you want to be deep down uh, into a parkade or a large uh, apartment building uh, basement or sub-basement. Now, of course, if you're living in the middle of nowhere, up in the, the, wheel, in the Rocky Mountains, uh, far from any target, you know, and you, at most you can get a very light dusting. You could actually be, you know, uh, just being in your basement is more than enough uh, to get through unscathed or maybe even in your center of your house is, you know, could be more than enough to get through unscathed. Um, so uh, moving on, uh, you know, you want to be able to have uh, as much protection as you can given where your target area is. Um, and it's always the best to err on the side of caution and find the, the, the most protective place you can be, at least for the first few days. I mean, uh, maybe if you have a, your little house and, you know, you're a couple blocks away from an apartment building that's got a... Uh, underground parkade, maybe hunker down in parkade for the first few days, you know, until whatever food and water you brought with you just uh, runs out, and then you head back to your house uh, uh, for the for the rest of the time once you run out of food and water. You know, of course, you have to sort of, you know, 
be good about judging that just how bad is the radiation outside hopefully you have a dosimeter of some sort if not you know this what is the radio telling you uh, hopefully you do have a transistor radio or something that will operate at that time so again uh, this is important information to know for helping you make decisions of where you're going to hunker down um, uh, protection factor is huge uh, and uh, basically uh, the deeper you are, the thicker the material is between you and the outside world, the better. If you're in a wood frame house, and uh, you know, and you have time, you should be um, piling sand along the outside walls of the, the exposed walls of the basement, uh, putting sand, you know, and then maybe building a sandbag lean-to inside the basement, um, and you can use pillowcases and boxes to fill them up full of sand just to to create a little bit of a bunker down there for yourself, um, and maybe even throw some sand on the on the floor of the directly above you um and again that takes time uh if you you have to be almost oh gee we're i think with nuclear war is imminent i better start getting prepared for this sort of stuff um similar to that farmer did in in the, in the old movie the day after when he was piling dirt on the outside of his wall when the things were get escalating uh, the, uh in the, in the war in europe or wherever it was i think it was in, set in europe or something like that so given all that um you know, stay safe. Uh, remember these this information. Look at the rest of my survival series. Uh, I've also done um, a couple of short videos on you know, what makes a good parquet to hunker down in versus a bad parquet to hunker down in and other information on that, including the 710 rule and the deterioration of fallout. I'll also talk a little bit more about fallout uh, as far as avoiding it uh, as best you can and in later videos so please subscribe uh, if you want actionable information on the risk of nuclear war and nuclear survival and do comment and do like bye for now